Hello in lecture number one of my course about Greenfield Defense. In the first chapter, we will see the most illustrative games from this opening. All of the games will be from uh, World Champions, so I think that this, uh, these are really good examples. First game will be between Donald Byrne and Robert Fisher. This is a very famous game played in 1956. Uh, at with, uh, Fisher was at that time really young, and after uh, that game he became quite famous. Okay, so let's start. It will be of course the Greenfield defense with some transposition. Of course, right now after e4, White could go to the King's Indian defense, but it was d4, and after Bishop f4, d5. After some transposition. We, will see, we are right now seeing the Greenfield defense. Queen b3, dc4, queen c4, c6. Of course, this is some uh, fully playable variation. e4, knight bd7. Here, probably the best move is the move uh, b5, queen b3, queen a5, with some nice position for black, quite typical for Greenfield. Uh, you have to be prepared. In that, at that opening to sacrifice some material uh, for some initiative. So this is quite typical play. But here uh, Fischer decided to play the move knight bd7, rook d1, of course quite obvious move uh, just to go uh, for, for, for the defense of the d4 pawn. Queen c5, bishop g4, and bishop g5. This is uh, an inaccuracy. White should have played bishop e2, and after knight fd7, queen a3, taking on f3, bishop f3, e5. The position will be, would be double-edged, maybe with a small plus for white. But here in the game, Donald Byrne decided to play bishop g5. Of course, such moves doesn't even look good, because white is simply losing uh, too many tempos. And here the start of some very nice uh, play from Robert Fischer, knight a4. Uh, let's have a look at what could happen after taking on a4, then knight e4, queen c1, if queen e7, then queen a5, e4, queen a4, and uh, black regained the material is, and uh, is definitely on top in that position. If queen c1, it doesn't change much, of course, because the initiative is just ter uh, terrible, and uh, black is even some material uh, up. So, of course, this is the line Donald Byrne doesn't want to go for. So, queen a3, knight c3, bc3, knight e4, just grabbing the central pawn, bishop e7, and queen b6, very nice uh, dynamic play from very young Robert Fischer. Of course, taking on f8 uh, cannot be good because uh, black has terrific compensation for the exchange and the position of white is totally collapsing. So this is why white played bishop c4 because uh, black, uh, white of course uh, just need to end his development. Knight c3, again very sharp, very good move. Bishop c5. If queen c3, then just spinning the bishop. Of course, queen e3, then queen c7, just regaining the material and winning the position in the game. Bishop f7, king f7. It doesn't change much because this is obviously very easy win for black. So, of course, white doesn't want to go for this line. And this is why he played bishop c5. Rook f8. King f1 and bishop e6. This is a uh, very famous uh, move, very famous uh, position. Very, very good uh, sacrifice of the queen. Here, uh, knight b5 wouldn't be so good because after taking on f7, king f7, queen b3, of course, black is losing suddenly. So, bishop e6. Is the only move, but it's enough just to win this position. 
Uh, here we have some different uh, moves uh, to, to see. Let's, for example, have a look. For example, bishop e6, then queen b5, king g1. And of course, this is very nice mate. Uh, so if not taking on e6, let's, for example, check uh, just grabbing the, the piece, then queen c5. Because the queen on c3 is simply pinned. And of course, this is very bad ending for white. If some other try, for example, bishop d3, then uh, after covering the s7 square, black can simply go back with his knight with a very pleasant position. So, of course, uh, the only option here is just ta to take the queen. Bishop c4, king g1, knight e2, king f1. Knight d4. Of course, uh, black is in no hurry, so he can simply grab another pawn. Because rook d3, a b6, queen c3, this is simply very bad. So, king g1, nothing uh, else the white can do. Knight e2, king f1, knight c3, and finally grabbing some material. Queen b4, rook a4. Queen b6, uh, knight d1. As you can uh, see, right now it's black who has much more material right now. This position is obviously uh, very easy to win. Let's have a look how the game has ended. Of course, there is no perpetual check. Bishop d5, just uh, eyeing the g2 pawn. Knight f3, knight d4. Queen b8. This is, of course, uh, this move doesn't change anything. h5, knight e5, king g7. As you can see, uh, Fischer is just uh, slowly improving his position. Right now, black is ready to play bishop d6. King g1, king f1, knight g3. And there is very nice end of the game. Knight e2. And white is checkmated. Very nice game. Uh, I must say that this is one of my uh, favorite games, uh, all of all, all from all of times. I really like here here the, the blacks play. Very dynamic. Very nice sacrifice of a queen. And I think that this game is really really nice to see. Let's move on to another game. It will be between two ex-world champions, Karpov Anatoly and Gary Kasparov. It was played in 2002, so uh, these are not uh, the famous uh, 80s, uh, when there were so many matches between these two. But still, of course, this is, uh, they were still very, very good at that time. Let's have a look how the game was played. Of course, the Greenfield defense. Knight f3, bishop g7, bishop f4, castling. Rook c1, d c4, e3, bishop e6, just defending the c4 pawn, uh, and with that move, black is simply uh, telling white uh, what to do right now, just to grab, uh, just to take uh, back the pawn on c4. Knight g5, bishop g4, f3. Of course, black has lost many tempos. Uh, but he uh, has achieved some something, especially right now the e3 pawn uh, can be at some point very weak. So this is definitely some something good for black. Bishop c4, uh, c6, queen b3 and e6. Kari Kasparov is playing very solid. Knight g4, knight d5. If here knight bd7, then casting. And the position is uh, quite similar to what we will see in the game. So this doesn't change much. Knight d5. This is the choice of Gary Kasparov. Bishop d5 and cd5. Kasparov preferred to take uh, with the c pawn, not with the e, but of course taking ed5 was possible too. And then after knight d6, queen d7, castling, knight a6. Rook fd1. The position is about equal. Computer maybe uh, assess this position as slightly better for for white, but I think that black doesn't have big problems here. 
but I think that CD5 is a little bit more dynamic option because Kasparov is simply sacrificing the B7 pawn. It's definitely uh, in his style. Knight b7, of course, white is forced to take it. Queen h4, bishop g3. Here, after g3, queen e7, knight c5, g5. Very dynamic play. Queen b5, knight d4, ed4, gf4. Uh, this position is some kind of uh, dynamic balance, uh, so there will be, of course, a plenty of play. So this was one of the possibilities, uh, but Karpov played bishop g3. Okay, queen h6, of course, uh, uh, just directly attacking the e3 pawn. Knight e2, right now the queen from b3 is defending the e3 pawn. But right at that moment, black can simply regain the pawn. There was also some other possibility in knight e7, but uh, it doesn't look good, because the queen right now definitely trapped. So the move bishop b7 is definitely more natural and better here. Knight a5, queen b4. If queen a6, then knight c4, bishop f4, g5, b3. Of course, the only move not to lose the important e3 pawn. gf4, bc4, and f 3 Anyway, black is just taking on e3. CD5 and this endgame. Uh, I think that this endgame would be definitely in Karpov's style, so I think that this would be a uh, quite quite good chance for for Anatoly to play in that line, because he, as you can see, this will be a very very positional play in that endgame. But Karpov went for some other line. He played the move queen before. Knight c4. And of course, in Karpov style, just sacrificing uh, some positional sacrifice of the exchange. If bishop f4, then again we move g5, e 3 and the position is quite similar. Uh, again, there will be some positional play and very complex play. But I think that the move uh, rook c4 is a good try here for white. d c4, and king f2. Very solid position from white right now. Rook fc8. Of course, black has to defend the c4 pawn. Rook c1. Bishop f8, queen a4, queen g5. So definitely the stage of the opening has ended. And this is a good time to, to, uh, to make some, uh, some evaluation what both sides uh, has achieved. Of course, uh, white has two pawns uh, and a very solid position, but on the other hand, black has some chances because he is simply an exchange up. And uh, we will see uh, which factor will be more important in that position. Of course, bishop h6, f4, queen f5, uh, the position would be about equal. Kasparov decided to centralize his queen with the move queen d5 b3 and queen b7. Uh, of course, this is a very useful move just to defend a7 pawn. Bishop e5, bishop e7, knight c3, f6. This move is quite important just to uh, kick the bishop from the e5 uh, square and not to let white play at knight e4 with some uh, good control in the center. Bishop g3. A6. Uh, of course, black is also in no hurry, so this is good prophylaxis. H3. Some mysterious moves, uh, very typical for Anatoly Karpov, because such moves is, uh, are very, very, as I mentioned, uh, mystery, I, I would even say. But of course, this is very good, useful move, uh, because white is just in no hurry. He is just improving the position. King F7. King g1, g5. Of course, Kasparov is trying to sharpen the play. King h2, h5, h4. Of course, white doesn't uh, want to let black play h4. gh4, and bishop f4. 
a quite an interesting uh, decision, but maybe bishop h4 would be more natural here. Here after rook c4, bc4, rook g8, knight e2, bishop d6, the position would be about equal. And I think that most likely it would just end in a draw. Bishop f4, rook c4, queen c4. Uh, there was a possibility to play bc4 and after queen b2, of course, right now, uh, after some exchanges, uh, it definitely favors black. But I think that Karpov Karp uh, would have uh, big chances just to hold this position. But of course, uh, the chances of black are slightly preferable. Uh, but Karpov took with uh, queen, rook c8, queen d3, f5. This is uh, a mistake because it's just weakening the dark squares in the black's camp. Definitely better choice would be king g7. And after e4, bishop b4, knight e2, queen b5, queen d1. It's difficult for black to make uh, any progress, so the position is equal. F5 is just some misplay, definitely. D5, very good uh, evaluation from Anatoly Karpov. Queen D7, right now after Bishop F6, D6, King D6, Knight E2, Queen B6, uh, Black has to be very precise, but uh, his position uh, is just just fine. Everything is holding, but uh, with only moves. Okay, so. D5, queen, d7. This is also possible to play. E4, very good moves uh, from Karpov. Bishop f6, this is some blunder. Of course, it was essential to take on e4, queen e4, ed5. Uh, and again, the position is quite, un uh, may, it may look like unpleasant for black, but everything is holding. But uh, definitely, it's not easy to play such position, and I think that Karpov uh, would be just play uh, this position for a win. But this was a good, better uh, choice than in the game. <coughs> because right now uh, Karpov also missed his chance. He should just play d6, queen e6, ef5, simply grabbing a pawn. Queen c6, knight e4, rook d8, and this position, of course, is uh, definitely uh, better for white. It's quite uh, surprising that Karpov didn't go for this uh, positional line, and he played knight a4. fe4, fe4, e5, bishop d2. Again, some misplay from Anatoly Karpov. After knight b6, queen g4, taking on c8, there is no perpetual check, and Karpov. Uh, has uh, very big chances in that position to simply win. Uh, he just played uh, bishop d2, which is a big mistake, because queen g4. Finally, uh, black gets some activity. Uh, after d6, bishop g5. This position is just better for black, and he has uh, bigger chances in that position. But it was also playable to uh, play d6. Okay, knight b6, rook g8. Finally, some activity. Queen f3, taking on f3, and the rook g3. Some uh, good play from Kasparov at that time. Uh, f4. After knight c4, rook f3, of course, the position is collapsing because uh, the pieces uh, from white. Are very passive. Knight on d2 is very passive, and this position is simply uh, one for black. So as you can see, uh, right now it's Karpov who has to fight for a draw. Here for bf4, bishop f4, rook g4, and here bishop e3. Bishop d2 wouldn't change much because again the position is simply collapsing. So bishop e3, taking on e4, knight c4, rook g4, a4, rook g3, 
Of course, right now there are no bigger chances for white. And after grabbing some piece, uh, of course, uh, Karpov just resigned because the position is hopeless. So very dynamic, very interesting game, I must say, from both ex-world champions. But finally, uh, it's Kasparov who prevailed in that uh, complicated and complex position. Okay, let's move on to another game. It will be uh, between Vasily Ivanchuk and Magnus Carlsen, so again some top-level game. And let's go. Again, bishop f4, bishop d7. Of course, there are many other lines to, to play, uh, but we are not going to focus it, uh, because uh, there will be some other chapters uh, for our repertoire. e5, queen a5. Knight e4 is some other big main line, of course. Rook c1 and rook d8. This is a very sel seldom seen uh, move. Uh, personally, I play here dc4 and queen c5, or even knight bd7, uh, but this is quite an interesting option. Queen a4. Of course, uh, there are again some different moves for white. Queen c5. b4. Queen c6. Queen a3. I'm not gonna focus uh, on the opening, I just want to go. Uh, to the to the middle game. D C four. Five. Queen B six. Right now, after Queen E eight, uh, Ivanchuk could uh, gain immediately some some nice uh, uh, initiative. For example, right now, Black is simply losing the piece because Rook B eight, Queen A seven, and the Rook has no escape. So this is some some nice trap. But Carlsen, of course, uh, saw this possibility and played queen b6. Bishop c4. Uh, taking uh, on e7 would be just too risky because uh, there arise quite typical initiative for the greenfield with bishop a3. So, of course, this is not uh, good to be so greedy. Bishop c4. Bishop e6. This is a good move. I like such moves because uh, this is the good moment just to simplify a little bit. Bishop e6, queen e6, castling. If knight g5, then queen c4, and suddenly white uh, has some problems to castle. After knight c4, queen b5, queen a5, king f1. I think that this position is uh, just. Uh, of course, white is just simply mated here, so this is not the best possibility for white to go for this line. So again, uh, white should uh, just end the development, so casting king side is a good move. Uh, knight bd7. Of course, there are some other moves possible, but I think that, uh, again, simply uh, completing the development, the most natural uh, moves are fine here in that position. Knight g5, queen f5, and finally Ivanchuk is grabbing a pawn. Knight h5, good uh, move just to uh, take on f4, aiming for taking on f4. Here, of course, queen e4, taking on f4 position uh, is, uh, I think, good for black, but still, a computer likes that position. Uh, but I think that uh, the activity uh, compensates black for the missing material. In the game it was played uh, rook fd1. Of course taking on f4, this dangerous bishop uh, is just taken finally. Bishop f8, queen e4, taking on e4. Of course in that position uh, white is a pawn up. But he has uh, double uh, pawns on the f file, so this position uh, shouldn't be so so terrible for for black. And he has uh, very big chances just to hold here. Let's see uh, how the end, end game was played. Rook d1, rook d1, bishop e7, 
uh, here right now after uh, rook c1 of course rook d8 king g2 the position is uh, slightly better for white the character of the play wouldn't change much knight f3 rook c8 knight e5 rook c7 here it was possible to play a little bit more sharp with the move f5 because after knight g5 rook c5 knight e6 rook b5 bishop d6 and this is just probably simply a draw some immediately uh, draw but uh, Karpov, uh, Carlsen didn't want to force uh, the matters and play simply uh, rook c7 king g2 f6 knight f3 king f7 h4 rook c2 a4 uh, after rook d2 rook d2 knight fd2 king e6 uh, black is very active and uh, the position is equal so this is why Ivanchuk decided to play the move a4 uh, rook a2 of course taking on a2 isn't good because uh, then it comes rook uh, d7 or even rook a1 knight c3 rook a3 rook c1 finally Carlsen is taking back the pawn but uh, right now the knight is quite uh, the knights are really nice centralized rook d3 rook c7 King e6, quite an uh, obvious move, just uh, to activate a little bit uh, the king. But here uh, Ivanchuk had some nice uh, chance, because after g4, knight b6, f5, gf5, gf5, king has to go back and is slightly passive. And after rook b7, definitely uh, white is in driver's seat, and uh, has very big chances just to win that position. So this was a really good chance for Ivanchuk, but he missed his chance. Okay, so rook b7. And rook d7, of course, uh, Carlsen has to defend the a7 pawn. Rook b8, of course taking on d7 would result with an immediate draw. Rook d8. But of course, Ivanchuk has to go for this line. Knight d4, and after f5, it's quite easy to draw this position. Knight g5. Of course, black is not afraid of, uh, of some weakness on the h7. Because he can simply take on h5. King h3, king d6. Some precision is still required. Knight f5, knight b5. But the uh, a-pawn is just guarantee uh, of a draw. King h5, king e4, knight e3, knight d6. Very good again, precise play. King uh, h6, and after knight f7, and taking on g5, this is simply just a draw. Let's have a quick look at how the game has ended. Of course, this is just a draw. So again, very, very complex play. Uh, again, this is quite a typical play for the Greenfield uh, defense. So you can, uh, you have to be simply prepared for, for such play. Uh, I think that, uh, that uh, Greenfield defense is a very interesting opening. Uh, and I think that uh, in that opening you have big chances to outplay your opponent, especially when you want to play for a win. Okay, uh, let's move on to another game. It will be between uh, Viktor Korshnoy and Kari Kasparov, uh, played in 2000 uh, in Vikanzi. Uh, this time we will see a variation with move bishop d2. I used to play that variation uh, as white, uh, just to, and I had some some nice uh, winnings in that uh, variation. But uh, after some time, I, reali I realized that it's quite easy for black just to uh, just to um, 
just to uh, no not to let me any 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 uh, anything uh, that I can hope for an advantage in that line. So this is why I stopped uh, playing the move uh, bishop d2. Uh, so let's have a look how the game was played. But still, I think that the line with the move bishop d2 is fully playable, uh, and it's not some some big mistake to go for this line. S link bishop e2, knight c6, knight f3, bishop g4, d5, bishop f3, gf3, knight a5. This is quite a typical uh, idea for white here, just to exchange the g7 bishop for the for white's uh, dark squared bishop. Queen d6, bishop g7, king g7, and f4. Quite an interesting idea. Uh, I can say that uh, as white I played here uh, different moves, for example rook c1, or even uh, some other idea like queen d2. But I think that the move f4 is really interesting here. Let's have a look how the game was played. Queen f6, queen d2, and c6. A very good idea just to destroy the white center. dc6, rook fd8, queen e3, and rook a to c4. Black is not wasting time on regaining the c6 pawn because it's absolutely not dangerous. Queen c5 and rook a to c8. Very good, very dynamic play from Gary Kasparov. c7, rook d7, bishop c4, and rook c, c7. I think that definitely uh, black is already a little bit better in that position. Queen f6, f6 uh, king f6, rook c1, rook c d4, b3, rook d3, king e2. Of course, uh, black uh, has the open d file, so it guarantees uh, some better chances to play for a win. Rook d2, king f3, rook 7d3, king g2, e6, rook g1, and king e7. Black is simply improving his position. f5. Of course, white uh, has to do something because uh, if he is not going to make any action, he would just uh, going to end up losing. So this is why he tried to at least get rid of uh, weak f f4 pawn. Knight uh, d7. But uh, right now, uh, the e5 square is in control of black. King f1, knight e5. Rook e2. G5, very good control over the dark squares in uh, white's camp. Knight a4, rook d1, rook e1, taking, taking, and rook d7, simply not letting uh, white to check on c7. King e2, knight d3, rook c3, knight f4, king f3, king f6, very good, very pleasant position for black. Knight c5, queen, uh, rook c7, h4. This is of course uh, not the best move, but uh, what else? Simply white wants to at least uh, make some simplifications, but it uh, doesn't change the result and the evaluation of the position. e5, of course, uh, just uh, strengthening the f4 knight. hg5, king g5, rook c4. B5, rook c1, and b4. This is the good moment just to start some play on the queen side. Rook c4, a5, knight a4, rook f7. Of course, uh, exchanging uh, of the rooks would be a very big uh, positional mistake because our rook is simply more active. King e3, knight g2, king e2. Knight f4, some repetition of course, and finally just pushing the h pawn, h5. Knight c5, knight g2, king e2, h4, very good calculation from Gary Kasparov. And right now, of course, black is simply uh, winning here because the h pawn is gonna promote. And king h4. In that position, Korshnoi simply resigned 
because he has no defense uh, against uh, the promotion of the Blacks uh, H-Pawn. So again, very good uh, game from, from Gary Kasparov. I think that, uh, that he really likes that opening because he had many chances just to play dynamic uh, in that uh, opening and this definitely suits his style. So this was the lecture number one, uh, the illustrative games. Uh, in next uh, chapters we are going to see some theory of the Greenfield. Thank you for watching, goodbye.